Hey guys, good evening. Uh, we have Dr. Amit joining us today and uh, Amit is an endocrinologist and uh, he is here to talk about uh, COVID and uh, diabetes, especially what, what diabetes patients can do um, during this uh, situation, what are the precautions they need to take it. So he's, uh, you know, sorry with that. So he's currently with uh, Kim's Hospital, which is a pretty renowned uh, hospital in uh, Sikindrabad. Uh, and he also has his own clinic, uh, which is Amit Clinics, which is based out of uh, Vikrampuri, Hyderabad. So, uh, Dr. Amit, uh, thanks for joining in, taking time out for this. And uh, yeah, friends, uh, Pulse Pharmaceuticals has actually sponsored this particular event so that you know we can share this particular knowledge about diabetes. A lot of uh, people who are uh, already diabetic, there are a lot of people who are very close to getting diabetic. So, uh, Dr. Amit, maybe you can talk about um, your journey, uh, quickly introduce yourself and then, you know, we have a lot yeah. of questions in our mind uh, which we want uh, clarity about. Yeah. Over to you. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Ravi Shankar. Thank you, Work, work Health. And I am very happy and thanks again, once again to Pulse Pharmaceutical for, you know, sponsoring this event for educating our masses. So, I am an endocrinologist based, based out of Hyderabad. I work at Kim's Hospitals. I am basically a consultant and endocrinologist at Kim's. I run my own uh, clinic called Dr. Amit Savadi's Endocrine and Super Specialty Clinic at Vikrampuri Colony, Sikandabad. So, what is endocrinology? You know, a lot of people do not know what is endocrinology. So, endocrinology is a branch of science which actually deals with hormones. So, hormones are a big field by itself. So what, what does an endocrinologist do? So endocrinologist is a super specialist dealing in diabetes, mm -hmm. thyroid, hormone-related disorders such as height problems, sexual disorders, or some ladies who do not have menstruation or have menstrual irregularity, we also deal with them. So this is a very branch where we see day in and day out. So now, in this pandemic situation, diabetes and COVID is the most Short for which I wanted to speak to all our viewers. So once again, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. And we can start, I guess. We can start the show. Yes, sir. Uh, so the common thing is, what, what are the symptoms of, uh, you know, diabetes? And when, when should they consult uh, yeah. you? Yeah. So the diabetes, the symptoms of diabetes, if you look at, again, varies from age to age. So if I have a child or if I have a teenager, who's coming to me at my clinic, that, that person or that child might just come with just loss of consciousness or feeling tiredness. Or sometimes the patient, uh, the parents start noticing that, you know, the child is being very drowsy, is unable to concentrate. And the most commonest features are excessive urination. So if a diabetic patient comes into our clinic, we, we, feel, we see that they are drinking, they are excessively thirsty and also they are excessively passing urine their intake of food. So they have a hyperpolyphagia. They increase hunger, increase thirst, increase urination. So they go frequently to the toilet. That is one more. Mm -hmm. In children, we see something called as a medical emergency or a diabetic emergency called as diabetic ketoacidosis. So a patient just goes into a semi-comatose like state suddenly. And then when you look at their sugars, their sugars might be as high as 600, 700. So that's the eventual uh, presentation in a child or in a teenage child who comes to us with diabetes that is called as a type 1 diabetes if you look at the most more commoner which we see in our general practice and more common so in the whole uh, country or you know in uh, statistics wise is type 2 diabetes so type 2 diabetes they are more obese so the weight is more in type 2 diabetes they have symptoms like you know excessive eating thirst excessive maturation but they, only about say 5% might develop with this di diabetic ketoacidosis. It is very uncommon to develop this kind of an emergency where they have a semi comatose or comatose. The more other other presentations of diabetes in type 2 diabetes mellitus are patients start losing weight. So losing weight can be one important sign to catch that the patient might be diabetic. Or in a, la in a lady or a woman getting recurrent infections like urinary tract infection or boils which are not healing or any any you know wound which is not healing can point towards diabetes so these are the commonest presentations then we have certain other 
certain other forms of diabetes like secondary diabetes which are a little rarer in comparison to type 1 and type 2 diabetes they are like called as fibrocalcific pancreatic disease so a patient presents to me with just loose stools or you know feels oily stools they mm-hmm. pass motions which are oily in nature they have decreased hunger and when you look at they have certain stones in and around their pancreas so that causes insulin uh, not to be secreted well so that's why that is called a fibrocalcific pancreatic disease as an endocrinologist i also see a few other co- uncommon forms of diabetes is the people should know such as secondary diabetes like you know someone is like khali so great khali was acromegaly so acromegaly is when there is excessive growth hormone that excessive growth hormone that comes from the pituitary basically it comes from some small part in our uh, brain called as pituitary gland so the patient has increased size of their you know finger rings or their chappals are getting increased they have a protruding uh, you know jaw line they are too tall their voice starts becomes so uh, sonorous voice they have a you know changed voice they can present with diabetes which is uncontrolled so one thing is they would require a very high amount of dosage of insulin or tablet so that's when we start investigating our patients retrospectively to know if it is a other form of diabetes so diabetes only people think is a simple type 2 diabetes but it has various various forms of presentation so the most common is take home is type 2 diabetes in younger children and lean lean patients we see type 1 diabetes and other forms of diabetes like secondary diabetes which i was speaking okay so which one is more dangerous or you know where precautions have to be more type 1 or type 2 uh, see type 1 diabetes has to has to have a tighter control because they are more prone to have complications so see anything is not dangerous in per se diabetes but the diabetes causes a lot of complications so what they have seen that type 1 diabetic patients if uncontrolled and not control at the earlier phase of diagnosis is more more prone to have complications so in diabetes you see two types of complications again such as micro and macro vascular so there is micro in the sense like your eyes your retina is getting involved so you have bleeding in your retina you are unable to see properly your kidneys might be affected your nerves might be affected oh my god so these are called ha so these are called these are called as micro macro vascular are you know your uh, cardiac issues you start getting a you know mi heart attack like feature so these are all dependent on how well you control your diabetes so if you are a well controlled you visit your doctor very often you you take care of your you know exercise and diet pattern you are definitely as normal as an other individual so your risk only increases but you will not be having those complications so complications have to be avoided the goal of treatment in diabetes is to have lesser complications okay so uh, coming to the topic uh, covid and you know people who are already diabetic or having diabetic symptoms so what what precautions uh, should they take yeah so now as we know covid is a viral infection it's a virus so precautions uh, see so what as literature suggests that you know covid patients are at a mild increase risk of developing uh, you know diabetic patients are at a mild increase risk of developing covid and those diabetics who have developed covid had severe form of covid who were uncontrolled so patients who are diabetic who are well controlled had covid which was as normal as an other individual who was non diabetic but if you are a diabetic and you did not have a good control your hdbc that's a 3 month average was more than 9% you are more prone to have a severe form of covid so what are the precautions is the universal precautions stay well good for diabetes also like wearing a mask doing a social distancing using a sanitizer in specific you would have to keep a very good control so what we are observing is we advise our patients that use a glucometer which is a machine which comes which is for self monitoring of your blood glucose at home ideally monitor it at least once in a week to once in two weeks if you are unable to maintain your target so what are our targets in diabetes is fasting sugar should be around 80 to 130 post prandial that is after you eat and you take it after two hours should be around 160 so if you are unable to maintain your target or your hba1c should be less than 7% ideally if you are unable to maintain this target 
you should consult your endocrinologist or your other doctor whoever is nearby to you over at least telemedicine so in 2020 telemedicine is approved by the medical council of india to consult us by video conference or video call so we would suggest that you know these targets have to be followed and monitoring and what one more thing which we are seeing as doctors commonly is patients have stopped to take their medication so please do not stop your medication do not be under an impression that you know once the course suppose i have written a three month course certain of the individual just stop it abruptly so either ideally talk to your doctor to stop it or not to stop it so if you are stopping it your sugars might go up high which will lead to an increased risk of infection so my sincere advice is please do not self medicate or self stop it please consult your nearest doctor right so there there are a lot of uh... you know influences of advertisements you know not only on the tv but there you know on social media there are a lot of uh, alternate medicines that are coming up uh, you know uh, so yeah. do you uh, suggest the you know patient should switch from you know whatever they are taking uh, see, some of the so what i have seen yeah what i have seen of alternate medications you see there are certain forms of generic medications which are available in the market and certain alternative medicines which i am not an expert of so my suggestion is see i am an english i am an allopathic doctor so my suggestion is certain of the individuals have a wrong concept that allopathic medications cause more harm than the alternative medication but i would i would you know contradict the statement because we have certain studies which have shown that you know certain alternative medications cause worsening of certain other things so it it's the patient discretion but as a specialist i would say you should meet your allopathic doctor if you are not satisfied and you are not following what we are telling and you are not able to achieve the control then you are most welcome to you know switch over to alternative medication but definitely see we have if you look at history the english medicine has been there for a longer time and we are all here we have all spent our years teenage years school years and then so on and so forth in medicine to you know do good to the people so my suggestion is please follow what we are telling judiciously then try so what we have seen as doctors is everyone wants an instant remedy mm. so you know you have to have a list of certain things when we tell you to follow the compliance is a very important thing in diabetes control diet is a very very important thing in diabetes control exercise patterns are very very important so it's a metabolic disorder patients should understand that all these together will definitely cause a good diabetic control yeah. so you you were talking about uh, hormone control uh, you know as as one yeah. of your specialty so uh, people who have uh, imbalances like hormone imbalance thyroid and all that so are they uh, prone to diabetic uh, is that any influence uh, Right. No, there is no direct correlation ravi shankar sir there is no direct correlation of thyroid and diabetes okay. but there is definitely correlation of certain hormones like cortisol hormone the growth hormone and so on and so forth which actually works on your diabetes so okay. these are all secondary forms of diabetes but no thyroid and diabetes do not go hand in hand but yes we have seen a lot of patients having both of this together okay So type one. If you look at type one diabetes, type one diabetes and hypothyroidism come from the same common precursor. So it's like a it's like a tree. Hmm. So the root cause in type one diabetes and hypothyroidism in a type one diabetic is the root cause is autoimmunity. So in our body there are certain things which are entering, start to fight with our body cells and then damage our own body. So autoimmunity is nothing but something is entering into your body triggering an immune reaction to your uh, antigen which is entering and then causing an uh, antibody uh, damage so there is auto antibodies which are being produced against this antigen so the common root cause in type 1 diabetes and thyroid can be related but not in type 2 type 2 is a different topic altogether uh, any uh, what are the warnings for uh, people when they have high blood sugar and what are the warnings for people who have low blood sugar So what and what yeah. are the precautions yeah. they need to take in? Yeah. So first, I will answer about low blood sugar. Low blood sugar is something called as hypoglycemia. So that term is hypoglycemia, where your sugar levels fall below seventy. So once if a patient falls below seventy, has sweating, has tremors, has shakiness, or you know is feeling dryness of the tongue, 
is unable to move sometimes or you know some patients might develop seizures also they might develop a fit because of no hypo no sugar which because the glucose doesn't reach the brain so these can be certain warning signs of uh, sugar being low so what we advise our patient is to if you are a patient who is old or a patient who irrespective of the age is on insulin i advise my patients to have a glucometer and i tell them these symptoms of hypoglycemia and i advise them to check it so if the glucometer reading shows less than 70 You have to take a 15 grams of anhydrous glucose, that is of glucon D, into mix it up in water and take it, and then later check it after 15 minutes. If still the sugars are like this, less than 70 odd or so, you will again have to repeat the procedure till it rises at least above 100, and connect to your doctor immediately who is nearby. But in case the patient is comatose, is not responsive, he is a diabetic. B advise our patients to have a glucagon shot so there is a glucagon injection which is available in the market we ask we train our uh, parents who are uh, for type 1 diabetes if the child is unresponsive suddenly we ask them to give this glucagon shot as subcutaneous under the skin and then the patient might uh, you know have a uh, levels which are elevated and can be brought to the casualty or emergency okay. so this is for hypoglycemia hyperglycemia can conversely have you know weight loss can present with a very bad urinary tract infection or sometimes we see a very bad high grade fever can come so its fever is because of the infection somehow or a patient might just develop very drowsy very lethargic you know is when gets a fruity odor from the mouth is unable to walk so these can all be warning signs that there is an impending diabetic ketoacidosis so there is what what this diabetic ketoacidosis is when the sugars are too high mm. they convert into certain acid it triggers a reaction where it forms certain ketone bodies ketone bodies are certain things which are formed chemically and then they form acid also so there is an acidotic reaction ketotic reaction which occurs at the level of the cell and the patient starts feeling lethargic weak you know is a uh, too drowsy so this is a medical emergency definitely needs to be coming and getting treated at the hospital um so uh, doctor there, there are men i mean there are certain characteristics men have you know they go to work they have a lot of stress levels you know they, they work in corporates or you know uh, you know at, at different levels uh, in an office and then women have a different lifestyle like you know typically if we look at either working women uh, you know where they're trying to manage you know home you know family and then also working and there are housewives so do you see uh, any lifestyle what what causes uh, diabetes in yeah. these two categories yeah. or three categories so, yeah. so if you look at men distribution who are working in the it culture so what we see we see an added and uh, added stress level one so stress definitely contributes to diabetes so there are new studies which have definitely told stress contributes to diabetes second thing is the habits so what we have seen is their food habits are not very stringent so they cannot follow food habits so they you know are onto that junk which is available at around their canteen or they are you know busy with their laptop and having it that's what we have seen and what we have seen is their added habits like smoking and alcohol mm. so that content increases with the level of stress and so on and so forth so that also contributes to your worsening of diabetes so there are studies which say smoking and alcohol cause a some amount of weight gain so weight gain alcohol causes weight gain and causes a uh, you know uh, you know the levels going high but there are again contrary reports that if you take alcohol in over an excess amount and you take insulin you might end up with a bad hypoglycemia because alcoholics are prone more to hypoglycemia in relation to you know stress and this in coming on to the women so what we have we have seen is women to men ratio when you look at the incidence is more more uh, with the men actually mm. and women are less affected with diabetes second thing is uh, the complication rates are much more in women who are post menopausal so once a lady achieves that uh, steady state or her periods are off Hmm. we have seen more complications with post menopausal women with diabetes so the increased risk of other complications increase in post menopausal women in younger women we advise them to have 
good exercise pattern so be it irrespective men and women so if you want to be out of diabetes you have a family history of diabetes your parents are you know both parents are diabetic so you have a risk of about say 50% to get diabetes so be identify certain individuals who are at high risk for diabetes and ask them to start following the uh, regimes very strictly so they should have a strict regime of diet exercise and have a steady proper meal timing and you know should keep regularly checking their stuff regularly checking their blood sugar is what my opinion is so friends uh, in the meanwhile uh, i have couple of questions but if you have questions all the viewers who are watching this live uh, do do post your question so that i can ask the doctor while we are live so your your next question uh, doctor uh, you know is it recommended now there is covid a lot of people who are diabetic are having a dilemma bahar se check karayenge ki nahi you know should i should i go for a blood check up which, which which is supposed to be their routine so what do you suggest we absolutely i'll tell you now uh, in terms of this covid pandemic as we all know see it's a dictum rule that you know if you are following all the precautionary measures you will not get covid so either you go on go to that lab and get it done or you call someone to collect it or the best thing if you are the most scared, scared person does do not want to go use a glucometer so the glucometer might show 10% lower lesser range if you look at to the lab value we see that the acceptable range of difference between the lab and the glucometer is a 10% lower range Okay. so the glucometer glucometer might under report your value of say about 10% if you want an authenticate report you are too we should be bold i think we have to move on because we have moved on with 7 months of covid and this is going to be there so my sincere suggestion to all my viewers is please get back to normal only have precautions in mind follow these precautions and you should move on with life okay so uh they they can basically order this glucometer or you know uh, yes yes absolutely now now everything is online or get a standard glucometer so standard glucometer should be fine okay and they should the one what uh, watchful thing is please uh, no look for the expiry so there are certain expiries mentioned on the strip of the glucometer which come in so what i have seen is patients have been using these strips for say about 6 years 6 6 Eight years or so, and so forth. So now, you have a lot. You have an expiry date. So please adhere to the expiry, and then you know discard those strips which you are going to use. So, doctor, uh, most of the clinics are like not open. I mean, some clinics, some doctors are opening yes. their clinics. Some are doing teleconsulting. So, what what is your approach? Are are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. So my approach now is I am using teleconsultation as a medium. So it's a fantastic medium. So hmm. so why I'm using this is in chronic diseases like diabetes, you have a follow-up patient who can connect to me. So see, there were certain guidelines till 2020, MCI never approved telemedicine as a whole. But in 2020, it has approved telemedicine with a few, you know, inverted comma marks, which the doctors and the patients have to follow. so i i connect to my patients every day on telemedicine and i am the compliance is much more better so you know they can contact me as easy as before they are across this so they are you know saving their resources on traveling to my clinic saving their time sitting across my you know waiting room for the turn to come in they are saving their risk of getting a covid in by chance coming you know out and contracting it somewhere so they are at home i am across this i have to see their reports i talk to them only one glitch is sometimes the physical examination glitch definitely comes in where i would want to examine that's my main thing which comes in but yes in most of my cases 90% of my cases we usually do not require a general physical exam in every case so if it's a well controlled case i would not want to examine them and now everything so you even have a bp apparatus which is at home you have a weight machine at home so what i advise my patients is please have a glucometer handy blood pressure machine handy and a weight weighing scale handy so these three things now the technology has gone so far ahead ravi shankar sir we have glucometers which connect to my laptop hmm. so the moment the patient takes a reading i can see that glucometer uh, reading flashing on my screen or we also have certain glucometer certain sensors which are coming in indian market where we put it on our arm 
that called as an ambulatory glucose monitor which records sugars every 5 minutes continuously keeps the data into that sensor and then with a reader you get a graph like picture that how many sugars were above the mean below the mean so it it has markedly changed our diabetes management in terms for patients also and terms for us also so without without pricking you can uh, they can actually check yes. uh, so it 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 just a single prick so it okay. says that sensor stays for 14 days you can swim jog bath do everything it's a normal it's just going to stay there with the tape it will not even be paining you we have certain of my patients who are on this for maybe 7 7 years so every 14 days they are changing and then i'm getting the reading so i have a graph which comes like that where it shows how many readings are above the mean which are set for them below the mean so for certain individuals who are using insulin i can know what time they had a hypoglycemia so i can titrate the dose for them very easily so technology has remarkably changed our management also and for the patient also so when everything is coming to your home we are also coming to your home so this is first time maybe you know in the world or in india your doctor is sitting across you and you know he is just right there in front of you true true i think so have have the prices reduced for some of these uh, you know equipments and technology which you have uh, spoken is it affordable uh so see yeah this is absolutely affordable the um, uh, market retail price would be around 2500 to 3000 for 14 days wow. so uh, that that's pretty reasonable it, okay it's it's pretty reasonable and it's recording every 5 minutes it's continuously recording so i have a reader i can give it to my patient the patient can just scan it and you know put it across the laptop he gets a summary so he will get a day to day summary he will get a you know 14 day summary cumulative i will also have time in range so there is something called as time in range which will show very clearly that if i had set 180 160 how many values were above so it shows like a graph every time so, so as, as a patient time. also i will know what i have eaten you know uh, yes, high yes. you know what, what are the things i need to control what's working for me yes. what's not working for me maybe a, yes. you know so, a banana didn't work yeah. after a meal or something i can you know reduce yes. that, that's a very yeah. good so we have we have a lot of old patients who unknowingly see so what happens with hypoglycemia is lot of our patients who are chronic diabetes and long standing diabetes do not get these warning signs of hypoglycemia because there is something called as a autonomic failure which occurs in a long standing diabetes so they without any symptom can have a silent hypoglycemia so these individuals are more happy because we can catch them we can catch that hypoglycemia which is silent at night it's recorded so next day i know that i have to reduce the value so it's 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 fantastic so this is this tool has revolutionized the type 1 diabetes management also because children carry to school and go they come back the mothers know what the child has you know skipped in or you know had chocolate and so on and so forth so this sensor the, the continuous glucose monitoring the flash glucose monitor have absolutely revolutionized the other revolutionary things which have revolutionized the diabetes management is an insulin pump mm-hmm. so there are dual pumps now there are insulin pumps which continuously deliver insulin at a static rate and there are also newer pumps where it delivers both glucagon and insulin so what does glucagon do is if a patient has a hypoglycemia it senses the pump senses automatically alarm comes in and glucagon is pushed in so glucagon was the same injection which i talked about uh, mm-hmm. to be given for children who have uh, low sugar so dual pumps have also come in they can just be put in uh, put it at their you know abdomen level the sensor and the tubing so this is how technology has revolutionized diabetes management for say You you just have to know what should work for you, and consult a doctor and you know opt for him. And if you can afford it, Perfect. you know this is something yeah. which will at least monitor that for a while, and then you can change your. So uh, uh, nowadays, uh, everything is on EMI. So these pumps have also been coming on EMI. Mm-hmm. So maybe as as low as maybe ten thousand a month, twelve thousand a month. Certain of the companies are giving it at EMI. So certain companies give it as you know demo versions also. Okay. So they can buy it on rent. They do not need to purchase it. Purchase. If they want to test it, they can take it on rent for a certain month, and then if they are comfortable, they can purchase it. So mm-hmm. That's how that, that's the technology option. is. Yeah. So we have some questions, sir. Uh, 
This yeah. is a question yeah. from uh, Mrs. Vijay Durga. After recovery from COVID, what diet and what problems we will face and what practice should we do? Yeah. So, post recovery of COVID, I would suggest my patients to have a healthy diet, like, you know, have a vitamin rich diet. So, see, everything concept, everything concept of diet comes in from immunity building. So, immune building foods have to continue because, you know, there are certain case reports not to scare anyone, but reinfection. That is, certain of the case reports are coming from world where patients are again getting a COVID. Very, very unlikely, very, very minute level of, you know, or chances of getting it, but definitely go on to a normal diet what you are having. Increase your, uh, you know, vitamin C content in the form of citrus fruits because citrus fruits are again safe in diabetes. You can have an amla, you can have a mosambi, you can have an orange, you can have an apple, you can have a papaya single slice. Start doing, you know, yoga was the traditional Indian form of exercise which had come in. So please kindly do that yoga at home. So best exercise is yoga or the simplest exercise would be, you know, climbing stairs if you are not too old, up and down or else just to push up, uh, sit ups, you know, maybe 10 to 20 sit ups or use a, just use a bathroom stool to do that step up, step down exercise. 15 to 20 so these exercises will keep you healthy so immunity should be strong willpower so mental health is also very important do not get anxious do not get panic panic will you know create a lot of havoc yeah. so half of the world is 2020 is a year of anxiety so people have gone into that anxious phase where they start you know looking once a COVID patient definitely starts getting that havoc, that havoc and that anxiety has created an ecosystem of anxiety around you. Neighbors start joining in, then someone else starts joining in, the maids start joining in. So it is not something, you know, like a wildfire. Please do not be too anxious. If you get a COVID also and post recovery also, you will be fine. So 80% of our individuals who suffer with COVID have a very mild or asymptomatic disease, they do not even have symptoms, maybe. 20% have symptoms, might require hospitalization. Among those 20%, 10% might, you know, 5% might go on to a ventilation and severe disease. In that 5% also, if you look at only 1%, God forbidden, have a mortality. Otherwise, rest 4% come home. So it is such a big statistic that, you know, COVID is not going to do anything. It's just a viral disease. But yes, Prevention is better than cure. Yeah, okay. So, uh, continuation of the same question from uh, Mrs. Vijay Durga. Uh, what precautions shall we take? I am taking 12 units of uh, 12 units of Lantus and Zorla uh, M2 Fort. I am assuming okay. these are the medicines. Uh, okay. Okay. So, I uh, it wouldn't be ethically right to talk about the medications on the program. Hmm. So, madam, I would suggest you to kindly connect to me uh, through my, you know, appointment list or, you know, looking at my name. But yes, definitely precautions, I would uh, advise you, you know, check your sugars frequently, like at least uh, weekly, twice or so. You can please use a glucometer to check your sugars. Keep your sugars, uh, you know, around 160 post prandial, that is after food. Before food, keep it around 80 to 130. But yes, for any other discussion on this, I would request you to please kindly connect to me in person. So, thank you, uh, Vijay Durgaji, uh, for these questions. Uh, next question is from Archana. How is that COVID recovered patients are getting infected again? So, yes. uh, I think this so is there going are studies, in the news for there a are, while. Yes. There are few studies which in world, in India, have said that, you know, a certain of the individuals do not develop antibodies. Mm -hmm. Still, it is very new because the disease itself is new. So, reinfection, perspectively in a viral infection is not known. But certain of the individuals, like, you know, HBS, uh, HBV and, uh, you know, hepatitis virus and all, there are reinfection chances which can happen. So definitely, there are certain minute chances, maybe 1% or less than 1% can have a reinfection. Why? We still need to have a lot of discussions on it. It is still very immature and premature to, you know, comment on this. Uh, this is a question from Madeline. Uh, once a person gets thyroid, will it remain with them forever? Yeah. So, yes, if it's a primary hypothyroidism, which is seen mostly in women, and it usually tends to remain in your body, it is for life, because, you know, your gland is not functioning properly. 
so the gland the number of cells see suppose i am de- developing thyroid today my gland has about 1 lakh cells over time the cell is getting dead the cell so 1 lakh is going to go 80000 80000 is going to go 70 60 and so on and so forth so the innate the body which is producing x amount of thyroid hormone slowly the hormone production is getting lesser because the cells are dying so the dose also will go on to go increase slowly and remain to a plateau level so definitely it is going to be a lifelong uh, you know uh, hormone replacement so ever i never comment on saying it is a hypothyroidism treatment i say it is replacement so we are replacing the hormone from outside so definitely yes it tends to be there uh, what what are the side effects for taking medications or for diabetes or insulin you know because common saying ek bar shuru kar diya to you have to continue that for life so uh, what what's your uh, take on that uh, yeah, that's again a misconception for insulin ek bar shuru kar diya to kabhi thode thode dino ke liye bhi keep it and then we stop it also so that's one yes side effects so biggest side effect can be hypoglycemia sugar is going low the other side effects certain of the medications like metformin cause some amount of you know gastric bloating cause some amount of you know uh, acid uh, gastritis that is your irritation or burping or you know feeling full and so on and so forth no so the most common side effects again if you are on an sglt2 inhibitor that is your you know newer class of drug that causes a lot of uti infection it can cause genito urinary tract infection that is your urinary tract infection these are the some of the side effects insulin yes insulin is the only side effect is hypoglycemia so why is that uh, uh, pan or you know anti acid medicine is nowadays given by default for any medication as a you know usko pehle khao fir baad mein might not be given maybe uh, this is not a relevant yeah. question yeah. for diabetes but uh, yeah. Yeah. maybe i am not sure why it is done because maybe you know most of the medications have a base of preparation of pharmaceutical base that could cause a some amount of gastritis so in india if you look at 40% to 50% of the individuals they complain of a, you know subtle gastritis kind of component in telangana basically and in andhra also because of our diet pattern so what you look at if you go towards our rural areas there is still you know the rich mirchi culture which is there so they i i, I used to be there in around nalgonda so i used to see that people used to mix a lot of lal mirchi that red chili with rice and raw and eat it so obviously when we are eating a such a spicy food definitely maybe my uh, you know uh, the gi tract would be irritated and cause a lot of gas and so that's how it is so this question is an extension from adlin uh, since you are also an uh, endocrinologist what are the things we shouldn't eat uh eat in term uh, uh, i think she she meant for thyroid because uh, the last okay. question was really thyroid thyroid yeah. thyroid ke liye cauliflower cabbage soya bean broccoli these are all to be taken in lesser quantities so now if you look at studies again see everything comes from a scientific data no one in the world has said if i eat 10 cabbages what will happen and if i eat one cabbage what will happen So that's why I tell you use it in a lesser quantity. Maybe weekly one you can have it. Okay. You do not point blank stop it. But yes, you can have it in lesser quantity. Um, the next question is from Sirisha. Uh, my uh, many mothers are developing uh, gestational diabetes, gestational diabetes uh, during pregnancy. How is it uh, possible for her to avoid it in future? Ah, so that's all. So now gestational diabetes, about 10 to 20, 18% can develop into type 2 diabetes. So mm-hmm. see, suppose I, uh, someone of my relative is a pregnant woman, develops a gestational diabetes, has gained overweight, mm-hmm. has not followed diet, delivered, post delivery still has not reduced weight, is following a irregular diet pattern. There is a risk of that lady. Uh, or mother to you know 18% of such mothers can develop well, uh, a type 2 diabetes so they are getting converted uh, pregnancy related diabetes to type 2 diabetes and then there is a chance of about 20% of the indu- uh, mothers to get a uh, you know diabetes in the second pregnancy so if a if a lady is pregnant 
in the first pregnancy she gets diabetes there is a 20% risk that she might develop a gestational diabetes in the second pregnancy and in these normal patients who have gestation induced diabetes 18% of the ladies might go on to develop type 2 diabetes which is again going to be there for life so the goal in such patients who are gestation diabetes is post delivery exercise diet pattern should be regular because you know your body has got an insult of gestation diabetes you might get a risk or there is an increased risk for you to develop a type 2 diabetes so uh, is there a possibility for the child to develop diabetes in future uh because no. the mother has gone unlikely. through gestation unlike 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 gestation mother no unlikely it is conversely the child can get a neonatal hypoglycemia but uh no so uh other functions like high cholesterol high blood pressure you know combination of that with yeah. diabetes yeah. A lot of people yeah, have this yeah. combination, just not diabetes. So, uh, what what are the side yeah. effects for that? So, yes. Yeah. So, other contributors or other risk factors in diabetes is high blood pressure. So, keep your blood pressure around one thirty eighty. All right. Keep your LDL cholesterol around seventy. So, LDL cholesterol is a bad cholesterol. In diabetes, we see a lot of hyperglycemia, who are that is the triglyceride levels are too high because of the diet pattern also and the high sugars also. and the second most common is ldl which is a bad cholesterol that should be kept kept less than 70 avoid smoking and if you are having complications of diabetes please keep a regular check like you know if you have you know you are uh, having a burning sensation in your feet or you are you know your slippers are just falling off or you know you are visiting a temple hmm. please kindly do not so what uh, what i see a common lot of common people is old patients who go to a temple walking on this heat heat flooring hot flooring and then they develop ulcers so what happens basically in diabetes is the sensation the thermal sensation so the temperature is you know the thermal sensation of their feet loses so they cannot sense if it's warm or cold and then they develop this big big ulceration or wounds on their feet so diabetic foot care is very important so before you take a bath please use your hand to look for the temperature of the water if it's very hot please kindly mix up the normal uh, keep it at room temperature after bathing you know wipe your body and the foot with a proper towel giving giving due consideration to your interdigital spaces so your interdigital spaces are the spaces which are be- between the toes or your fingers these are the most common spaces where you can get infection infected so these interdigital spaces have to be wiped properly use a moisturizer cream or something called as moisturizer which is rich in urea for keeping your foot not getting dry so what happens is there is dryness in your foot that leads to cracks and cracks give way to your you know infective pathologies or infective bacteria in your foot and causing a foot infection so this is the most common presentation i see got to correct it so uh, how often should uh, patients diabetic patients visit the doctor consult the doctor what frequency is so that? yes so yes so if my patient is on two consecutive visits maintaining range with a normal limit i would call him every six months but if my patient is not being under good control or is not being you know with good hba1c i would call him every 3 months i am a newly diagnosed patient i look i call him after four weeks of diagnosis so four weeks of at diagnosis three monthly if you are well or three monthly if you are poorly controlled six monthly if you are well controlled six monthly to one year based on patient basis and also every year i ask them to do a complication work up for their retina for their foot and also their other major complications So, doctor, uh, supermarkets, shopping in supermarkets are very lucrative, and you have a lot yeah, of yeah. Uh, colorful stuff displayed, packed foods that are uh, displayed out there. What, what, what are the things we should avoid from the supermarkets, uh, especially so for any, patients? Yeah, yeah. So, anything white is not good for diabetes. Wheat, maida, wheat sugar, wheat rice. So, all white. or these are the white basically you have to concentrate so maida is not good corn flour is not good 
sugar is not good rice is not good so anything which is white white bread kurche also is not good so anything white please avoid but not too colorful colorful because the chocolate packings are very colorful so please avoid chocolate so how do you how do you plan your supermarket shopping so if i get into that supermarket store my first i should be on the super food such as you know these millet based diets these ragi based diets and certain you know brown rice so fur boiled rice is very good so if you look at fruit your fruit should contain low glycemic index or medium glycemic index food such as apple kiwi oranges you know uh, then you can have apple one to one one mango half mango i would say okay one to one one banana is okay see we are human beings the more i say no the more we would want to do it so we, i do, i suggest that you know you have it in moderation one to one one to one is okay brown bread is perfect so brown bread two sizes and that too with studded grains now if you tell bread what happens is i have been a lot of my patients saying bread doesn't mean you know four slices or five slices maximum by two rice doesn't mean a full bowl of rice it means one cup rice in the afternoon fruits doesn't mean at night i would ask them to take it down level 1130 use a sugar free like stevia so you should use a sugar free which is plant based uh, product called stevia avoid your refined so now oil a lot of my patients ask which oil can i use for cooking hmm. if you look at this picture olive oil is a olive oil is very good that too in that virgin olive oil is good and you can also use sunflower oil because it has been since a longer time so avoid this coconut oil groundnut oil you can avoid you can avoid the groundnut and coconut oil not good basically for the heart and healthy so this would be an ideal supermarket tour which i have given you that you know choose a brown brown uh, go into your brown section more go into your pulses section more go into your gram section more Forget those jellies, jellies, jams, you know, sweets, and you know those attractive packing biscuits because biscuits are also made of maida. So no biscuit in the universe is sugar free. So take home should be no biscuit in this universe is sugar free. If you just turn off the wrapper, you will have some amount of carbohydrate. So that's how is this supermarket store. so uh, what about dry fruits a lot of people feel that dry fruits could so you know this is just hog on dry fruits yeah so now cashews are not good because cashews are again rich in cholesterol so you know it's not good you can have certain you know those acrot kind of features or fig sometime one and two can be okay mm-hmm. you can have a badam you can avoid pista avoid cashew nuts avoid kishmish these are not good for health These are not good for health. So please avoid those. You can have all these. Although sometimes avocados can be taken, but not uh, very no regularly. So dry fruit again, you can just take it in moderation. But avoid these anjis and all and so on. So uh, next question: Elderly uh, elderly people with diabetes uh, for long time have their uh, vision and you know uh, vision. You know they lose their vision eventually and. Uh, they are also losing the balance so what are the precautions for them any changes anything? yes yes so diabetes see now diabetes as i already told has some retinal problems so in retinal problems your vision starts losing because you know your vision measure one is your vision you are unable to see properly more so in the night that is also with diabetes true and you are that your gait that is your style of walking alters with diabetes because the loss of spinal axis or the spinal nerves which are supplying your foot are lost so the central uh, versus your peripheral axis is lost and they have that you know that uh, ataxic gait so for such for such old patients i would ask them you to have a caretaker for them okay. because they are more prone to have fall so if a old patient falls down he is more to, he or her is more prone to have a fracture and this all can lead to a complication got it so what what are the uh, small changes that they can bring in uh, these okay. elderly people so that you know their vision is proper or uh see now one thing is abhi what happens is you have to tackle all this early that's what happens 
a lot of our patients neglect it at the earlier phase because they start uh, relative shopping. So relative shopping is a very common thing in India. Okay. I speak to my relative. My relative becomes an added doctor. Then I speak to another relative. He he starts becoming the super doctor to the other relative. So we do a relative shopping for maybe one two years. Then we become self self reliant. We start becoming self practical. We do not want to believe. Now we have an added doctor in our life is a Google doctor, Google Baba, who gives out a lot of things. So you know, this has all contributed. And then when they come into our practice, they have already come into an advanced phase. So my sincere request to all my viewers is please come early, where I have time, where I have options for giving to you, and I can help you. And not coming late, where I am helpless, and you know, I guess I have to be sorry. I completely agree with you. A lot of gyan that is shared, you know, online, you know, and yeah. contradicting so statements. So the gyan which is shared online is not filtered. So we do not have any you no know, any filtration in the gyan because everyone has a YouTube access, everyone has a laptop and phone, everyone makes a video. Yeah, got it. Sir. Uh, so Dr. Amit, thanks a lot for uh, sharing Thank your you insights so and you know uh, spending time with uh, us and the audience. to clarify a lot yeah. of questions i'm sure this will be very helpful because a lot of us have this uh, dilemma bahar nahi ja sakte doctor ke paas nahi jana you know continue the same medicine not consult but you know this tele uh, medicine option is available so you know they can consult the doctors they can have the conversation as we had uh, today and clear all their doubts and you know continue or change their medication as per the recommendation so thanks a lot audience for joining in um, you know do follow and uh, dr amit is also there uh, available uh, you know on the social handles we'll we'll share that so you can connect with him take an appointment consult with him and then you know do um, you know since it is still consultation you know you, you can you know basically consult him from anywhere uh, across the world so there, there are no barriers right now so feel free to uh, reach out for any questions and uh, thanks a lot Thanks a lot, Dr. Amit. Uh, it's a nice uh, conversation. I, I thank you so myself. much. Thank you so much, Abhi Shankarji, for getting me onto your show. Walk TV is an amazing platform. I wish all the success and endeavors for Walk TV, all your team, Pulse Pharmaceuticals for making this show happen. And I am very glad to all the people who joined our show today. I am indebted and very thankful to all of you because without all of you, we doctors are no one. So. my client my patient is everything to me so i dedicate i honor i thank everyone for joining me today evening thank you thank you once again for having me on this show thank you thank you sir thanks a lot thank, thank you. you bye bye, bye.